In section 4.3, you will solve quadratic equations of the form x squared plus bx plus c equals 0 by factoring. We're going to factor the trinomial x squared minus 2x minus 48. This trinomial should factor into a binomial times a binomial. So we'll set up our parentheses. And to factor this trinomial, we'll factor the first term first, and factors of x squared are x times x. They go first in our binomials. Okay, and then we'll factor the constant term, the third term, negative 48. We want factors of 48 that have a difference of 2. Factors of 48 that have a difference of 2 are 6 and 8. 6 times 8 is 48, and if, because I have a negative middle term, if I make the bigger factor negative and the smaller factor positive, I will be able to distribute and multiply these binomials together to get my trinomial back. So distributing, I would have, as a check, I would have x times x first, that's x squared, and then I'd have x times negative 8, negative 8x, then I'd start over with 6, 6 times x is 6x, and 6 times negative 8 is negative 48. So if I add like terms in the middle, negative 8x plus 6x, I get negative 2x. And my factoring checks. The factors of x squared minus 2x minus 48 is x plus 6 times x minus 8. Okay, let's factor again. Let's factor p squared plus 2p plus 4. Notice that in all of these examples, our a value, because this is of the form ax squared plus bx plus c, our a value is 1. So when I factor this trinomial into a binomial times a binomial, I want to factor that first term first. Factors of p squared are p times p, and then I'll factor the constant term 4. I'm looking for factors of 4 that sum to give me 2. Are there factors of 4 that will sum to give me 2? Well, factors of 4 could be 1 times 4, but they add together to give me 5, not 2, and 2 times 2 is also 4, but they add together to give me 4. So this trinomial we say is not factorable. None of the factors of 4 will work in our binomials. Okay, let's try this next one. a squared minus 13a plus 22. We'll try and factor this trinomial into a binomial times a binomial. Factoring a squared first, a times a is a squared, and then the constant term, I'm looking for factors of 22 that add to give me 13. And those factors are 2 times 11. And now, because that middle term is negative, I want to make both of these factors negative so that when I check by distributing, a times a is a squared, a times negative 11 is negative 11a, Start over with negative 2. Negative 2 times a is negative 2a. And negative 2 times negative 11 is that positive third term, 22. So adding my like terms in the middle here, I get a total of negative 13a plus 22. So I get my trinomial back and my factors check. a minus 2 times a minus 11 is equal to a squared minus 13a plus 22.
Here we're going to factor the special product r squared plus 14r plus 49. This is a special product that we call a perfect square trinomial because when we factor it, it's going to be a binomial times itself. I'll factor r squared first. r times r is r squared. Then I'll factor the constant term 49. And factors of 49 are 7 times 7. And I can make both 7's positive so that when I check and distribute, r times r is r squared. r times 7 is 7r. When I start over with 7, I have 7 times r. I have another 7r in the middle. And 7 times 7 is 49 at the end. So adding those like terms in the middle again, I get r squared plus 14r plus 49. We just factored a perfect square trinomial into a binomial times itself or a binomial squared. So I can write that r plus 7 times r plus 7 as r plus 7 the quantity squared. Another special product looks like this. We're going to factor v squared minus 9. This is the difference of two perfect squares. And when I factor this binomial, it'll factor into a binomial times a binomial. I want to factor v squared into v times v and 9 into 3 times 3. But now the signs have to be plus and minus. I factor this difference of two perfect squares into the sum and difference of the square roots of those two terms. And when we check and distribute, v times v is v squared. v times negative 3 is negative 3v. Then start over with 3, 12 times 12, so that when I check, I'm going to get that perfect square trinomial back. p times p is p squared. p times negative 12 is negative 12p. Start over, negative 12 times p is another negative 12p. And negative 12 times negative 12 is positive 144. So adding those middle terms, those like terms, I get a total of negative 24p. And I get my perfect square trinomial back. So I know that that perfect square trinomial factored into p minus 12 squared. Okay, the second example, m squared minus 121, because it's the difference of two perfect squares, the square root of m squared is m, and the square root of 121 is 11, I can factor it into a binomial times a binomial. The sum and difference of the square roots of those two terms. So the square root of m squared again is m, and the square root of 121 is 11. So I'll just check. m times m is m squared. m times negative 11 is negative 11m. But when I start over, 11 times m is positive 11m. And positive 11 times negative 11 is negative 121. So my middle term sum to 0 again. They're opposites. And I end up with this binomial, m squared minus 121. Here we're going to solve by factoring to find solutions or roots or zeros, which are x-intercepts. So when we solve this quadratic equation, we're finding um, something that has many names. They're x-intercepts because, remember, this equation is of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals y. And to find x-intercepts, all we do is let y equal 0 and solve for x. So that's what's happening here. We're letting y equal 0 and we're solving for x. Now to solve this equation when I have 0 on one side and a trinomial that's factorable on the other side, I want to factor and then use the zero product property to find my solutions. Factors of x squared go first, x times x. Then I want factors of 42 that have a difference of 1. Factors of 42 that have a difference of 1 are 6 times 7. And I need a negative middle term, so I'll make the bigger factor negative 
and the smaller factor positive. And I'll just run a quick check. x times x gives me x squared. x times negative 7 is negative 7x, but I'm going to add that to positive 6x. So I'm going to get negative 1x in the middle. And positive 6 times negative 7 is negative 42. So it factors, and now I want to use that zero product property that I already mentioned. It says that if AB equals 0, then A equals 0 or B equals 0. One or both of the factors are equal to 0. So to get our solutions, we set x plus 6 equal to 0 or x minus 7 equal to 0 and solve for our two solutions. Here I'm going to have to subtract 6 from both sides to get x alone. And over here, I'm going to add 7 to both sides to get x alone. So these are the two solutions to this quadratic equation. Solutions, roots, or zeros, which are x-intercepts. And I'm going to put them in a little set, use set notation, in order to express my solutions. Okay, a couple more examples. We want to find the zeros of the function by rewriting the function in intercept form. We looked at intercept form in section 2 of chapter 4. And to write this equation in intercept form, we want to complete the square on x. So I'm going to move that constant term, negative 28. Oh, no. That's not what I want to do. I was going to put it in vertex form. To put it in intercept form, all we have to do is factor. Because remember, intercept form is y equals x minus p times x minus q. Okay, so we're looking for p and q, which are the zeros of this function. So factoring, x times x is x squared. I need factors of 28 that have a difference of 3. That's going to be 4 and 7. And because 3 is positive, I want my bigger factor positive and my smaller factor negative. So that negative 4x in the middle added to positive 7x on the outside gives me positive 3x as my middle term. And negative 4 times positive 7 is negative 28. So it checks, and now I can uh, pick out the zeros or x-intercepts of this equation. I know that they're going to be 4 and negative 7. Okay, let's try it again. We're going to put this equation in intercept form. So we're going to factor our trinomial. Factors of x squared go first, x times x. I need factors of 4 that add to give me 4. That's 2 times 2. Make them both negative. So that negative 2x in the middle plus negative 2x on the outside is negative 4x as a middle term. And negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4 for a third term. And now that I have it in intercept form, I can pick out that p value and that q value again. Remember, p is subtracted from x and q is subtracted from x. But in both cases, they're 2. So this is a case where I get one solution or 1, 0, 1 x-intercept. Include with your notes of this video guided practice problems 1 through 7 odd and 8 through 12 even on pages 252 to 255 of your textbook.